Okay, so welcome to the next section of Illustrator. And this section deals with uh, the effects palette. So with this first lesson, I'm going to turn something, well, absolutely nothing, into something. And after I show you this, prepare yourself for a good, oh, three or four days of wasting your time making these because they are so freaking cool. Okay, first off, just make a little splotch using the blob tool. For here, I'm just going to go in and basically go like this. And then highlight that and go into the effects. The first effect I want to show you is twist. Okay, in twist, I could basically tell it to twist about round as many times as I want based upon a degree. How about I type 360 degrees here and then click anywhere. Hit OK. Ooh, that's pretty sweet, right? It's different. Still not something, but it's better than nothing. Okay, now what can I do with it? Well, let's see. I also have the ability to go in. Let me center this a little bit better. Maybe put it down here because these can get rather big. I'll go to effects and this time transform. Hit preview. Let's type in maybe 30 here. So it's going to make 30 copies doing something. Let's uh, make it so it spreads out. And maybe for each time it changes a degree, like maybe five. Eh, boring. How about 40? Ooh, better. How about 20? Not bad. Now you can mess around with your reflex if you wanted to. You could choose random to check those out. And for each one, you might you can vertically offset it too. That's going to wreck the pattern, so I'm going to choose not to do that. So for the lower the angle, you know, the bigger the actual circle you're going to get, and then the more copies you're going to have to make to make up for that. So that's pretty sweet. There's no doubt about it. Now, I want to be able to do this to anything. So what I'm going to do is go to the window under Graphic Styles and click it and make it big. Have this highlighted and go ahead and hit this New button. Okay, now what that did is, let's make another splotch. Let's click anywhere, make another splotch. Okay, click on it. Bam, new pattern. I'm also not limited to just this. Let's say I like this, but I want to work on something maybe a little bit different. So under the appearance panel, I could see everything that just happened to this. The graphic style basically twisted it, transformed it, warped it. But if I need to go back into any one of these, I can. Okay, so let's say the under transform this time, maybe I didn't want that. Maybe I wanted uh, 30 and uh, 20 here. Okay, preview, it changes. Okay, maybe under, um, let's look at the stroke. Under stroke, I have the ability to change the stroke color to maybe red. Okay, or the stroke uh, as far as how big it is. Like I could put two points or 0.5 points. Also, I could take any one of these and duplicate it. So let's take this one, for example, fill. I could take fill and duplicate it, and now I have two fills. This one might be a gradient. This one might be a solid color. And maybe this one could be like a multiply. Okay. If I want to turn that off, I could turn it off. 
So you could do that with stroke, twist, anything. I can also apply a secondary uh, effect to it now. So now I can do a, a transform and I could take it and make 20 copies. And that gets moved into a horizontal axis. Pretty sweet, right? So this is all vector. So I can zoom in as big as I want, or I can make this into something else. You know, I just just with this simple shape, I can manipulate the shape. I could take this shape and I can carve it down using my uh, oh other side of my Wacon tablet and clip it a little bit and make a whole bunch of other stuff out of it. Nice. So the power is limitless. What your job is, is to make a picture frame using this technology. Okay? And I would highly suggest maybe integrating it within something like uh, the pattern brush that I showed you in the last videos. So I want a very ornate gothic frame with a tribal twist to it wrapping around an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, okay? Using this technology. You know, make it three. I want three picture frames and I want them saved out two different ways. I want them saved as a JPEG. Okay, so I want you to export it as a JPEG on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and show me three of those. And then I want three AI files too per student. They will be saved under student AM or student PM frames. So we can use them later on with our collection. All right, so that is your uh, assignment. Good luck and on to the next video.